Welcome to another Ziva math video. In this video, we will learn about multiplying with mixed numbers, including multiplying a mixed number by another mixed number, multiplying a mixed number by a fraction, and multiplying a mixed number by a whole number. First, you'll need to understand how to multiply with fractions. Remember, we will multiply the numerator by the numerator, and then we'll need to multiply the denominator by the denominator. If you need to practice, go check out our multiplying fractions video using the link in the video description below. If you're ready, let's take a look at our first example. For our first example, we have 3 and 7 eighths times 1 and a half. So we have a mixed number times a mixed number. And we just said that we need to have our problem set up so we can multiply our numerators together and our denominators together, which means you're going to have to turn these mixed numbers into improper fractions. And we do that by multiplying the denominator times the whole number and then adding the numerator. So 8 times 3 is 24. And then we're going to add our numerator. So 24 plus 7 is 31. And the 31 becomes our numerator of our improper fraction. And then the denominator of 8 remains the same. And then we need to do the same steps with the 1 and a half. We're going to multiply our denominator times our whole number and then add our numerator to turn our mixed number into an improper fraction. So we have 2 times 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. And then we're going to add our numerator to that, so 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. So the 3 becomes our new numerator, and our denominator of 2 remains the same. So we'll have 3 halves. Now I have my problem set up so I can be multiplying two fractions. So I'll be multiplying numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So for our first step, we'll multiply 31 times 3, our numerator times our numerator. And if you need to go out to the side to do this, you can go out to the side and set it up just like multiplying with whole numbers, 31 times 3. And when I set up 31 times 3, I see that I have 3 times 1. 3 times 1 is 3. And then I have 3 times 3 is 9. So my numerator is going to be 93. Then I'll be multiplying my denominator times denominator. So we'll be looking at 8 times 2. And 8 times 2 is 16. And then if you can leave your answer as an improper fraction, as long as you can't simplify it, 93 sixteenths will be your answer. But since we're dealing with mixed numbers, most of us will be needing to change this improper fraction into a mixed number by dividing 93 by 16. So 93 will go on the inside, 16 will go on the outside, and 93 divided by 16 is 5. And then 5 times 16 is 80. When we subtract 93 minus 80, we're left with 13. 3 minus 0 is 3. 9 minus 8 is 1. And so our quotient will become our whole number. So our quotient of 5 will become our whole number. Our remainder of 13 will become the numerator, and then our denominator of 16 will remain the same. So our final answer will be 5 and 13 sixteenths. Let's look at another example where we're multiplying a mixed number times a mixed number. And again, we've got to turn these mixed numbers into improper fractions in order to complete our multiplication steps of numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So to turn our mixed number into an improper fraction, we're going to multiply the denominator times the whole number. 5 times 2 is 10. And then we're going to add 
our numerator. So 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 will become our new numerator. Our denominator of 5 will remain the same. Then we need to do the same thing to the 3 and 1 fourth. We're going to multiply our denominator times our whole number. So 4 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12. And then we're going to add our numerator. 12 plus 1 is 13. 13 becomes our new numerator, and our denominator of 4 remains the same. So now we have a problem set up where we have a fraction times a fraction. So we're looking at numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. But first here, I see that 4 and 12 share a common factor of 4. So I'm going to do some simplifying before I continue on and multiply. So I can divide 4 by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And I can divide 12 by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So when I go to multiply, multiplying my numerators, I'm multiplying 3 times 13. And 3 times 13 gives me a new numerator of 39. And then I'll be multiplying my denominators. 5 and 1. So 5 times 1 gives me a denominator in my answer of 5. So now I'm at 39 fifths. If you can leave your answer as an improper fraction, you are done. Most of us will need to turn this into a mixed number, and we're going to do that by dividing our numerator by our denominator. So we're going to divide 39 by 5, which means the 39 needs to be inside, 5 needs to be on the outside, 39 divided by 5 is 7. 7 times 5 is 35. When we subtract 39 minus 35, we get 4. So when we write our mixed number, our quotient becomes our whole number. So the quotient of 7 becomes our whole number. The remainder 4 becomes our numerator. And our denominator of 5 remains the same. So we get a product of 7 and 4 fifths. So what about when we're multiplying our mixed number times our fraction? We still need to get set up so we can multiply a numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So the mixed number, we do need to turn into an improper fraction. We're going to do that by multiplying the denominator times the whole number. 4 times 2 is 8. Adding our numerator, 8 plus 1 is 9. So our numerator will be 9. Our denominator will stay the same, so it will remain 4. And I don't need to do anything to the 2 thirds. So I'm going to have 9 fourths times 2 thirds. So a fraction times a fraction now. And one thing that I do notice here before I multiply numerators and multiply denominators is I do share some common factors. Looking at 4 and 2, 4 and 2 share a common factor of 2. So I can divide 2 by 2 and I have 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And looking at 9 and 3, those also share a common factor. They share a common factor of 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now you're ready to make your multiplication steps. So numerator times numerator. 3 times 1. 3 times 1 is 3. And then denominator times denominator, 2 times 1 is 2 for a product of 3 halves. And if you can leave your answer as an improper fraction, you are finished. If not, we need to turn 3 halves into a mixed number. If you already know that it's 1 and a half, then you don't need to show your division steps. If not, you're putting 3 on the inside, 2 on the outside, and walking through that division step of 3 divided by 2. So you'll have 3 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. When you subtract 3 minus 2, you get 1. So that quotient of 1 becomes your whole number. Remainder of 1 becomes your numerator. And the denominator stays the same for a product of 1 and a half. And for our final example, let's look at what happens when we multiply a mixed number by a whole number. And again, our process is the same. We need our problem set up so we can multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator, which first means that that whole number needs to be set up as a fraction. We turn our whole number into a fraction 
by putting the three over one. And the next thing I suggest that you do is rewrite your problem so that you have your numerators and denominators lined up. And so I'll have three over one times, and then we have two and two thirds. And again, we need to change this mixed number into an improper fraction. So that is our denominator times our whole number. Three times two is six, and then we're going to add our numerator. Six plus two is eight. So again, writing it so that my numerators are lined up. So the eight is my numerator. My denominator of three remains the same for my improper fraction. And now I'm looking at numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. But the first thing that I notice is I have three and three. They share a common factor of three. So I can go ahead and simplify here by dividing three by three is one. And then as for the other three as well, three divided by three is one. Multiplying my numerators, I have one times eight is eight, and one times one is one. So I get eight over one, and eight over one is a whole number. Eight over one is a whole number eight. So my product here is eight. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.